we have learned a lot about elements on the periodic table and the properties of those elements. And now we're going to begin to learn how those elements combine to make compounds containing different types of bonds. There are three major types of bonding that occurs in chemical compounds. The first is called covalent bonding, and this results from a sharing of electrons between two atoms. So the electrons are technically owned by both atoms. Now sometimes those electrons are shared equally, and sometimes they're shared unequally, but anytime the electrons are being shared, it involves covalent bonding. A second kind of bonding is called ionic bonding. Ionic bonding results from an electrical attraction between charged ions. One of the atoms is going to give away electrons and become a cation, whereas the other atom is going to gain electrons or steal the electrons and become an anion. Because cations are positively charged and anions are negatively charged, those opposite charges attract to each other to form an ionic bond. The last kind of bonding is called metallic bonding. And this involves an attraction between metal atoms and their surrounding electrons, where the electrons are free to flow around all of the atoms in a sea of electrons. We'll learn more detail about metallic bonding later on in the chapter. In order to determine the type of bond that's involved in a compound, we estimate it using its electronegativity difference between atoms. If you look at an electronegativity table, the largest difference between atoms is going to be 3.3. This is because fluorine on the periodic table has the highest electronegativity and cesium has the lowest electronegativity. So the maximum difference in electronegativity between atoms will be 3.3. And if something has a difference of 3.3, we consider it 100% ionic. As that percentage of ionic character becomes less, then we classify the bond as covalent. So the type of bond that forms depends on how strongly those elements attract electrons. In general, anything that's greater than 50% ionic has a difference that is greater than 1.7 is considered ionic. Anything that has a difference of less than 1.7 is considered covalent. When an ionic bond forms, the atom with the lower electronegativity will lose electrons, and that's what will form a positive cation. For example, sodium has one valence electron in its outermost shell that it will lose in order to become stable, like its nearest noble gas. When it loses that one electron, it will end up with a charge of positive one. Atoms that have a higher electronegativity will tend to gain those electrons. So chlorine has seven valence electrons in its outermost shell, and it only needs one more in order to become stable like its nearest noble gas. So it will gain the one electron that is lost by sodium to form a negatively charged anion. Now notice the sodium ion is positively charged, the chlorine ion is negatively charged, and now there is an electrostatic attraction between those two particles where the opposite charges attract to each other, and that's what forms the ionic bond. When a covalent bond forms, there can be two different types of covalent bonding. You can have a polar covalent bond in which the electrons are shared unequally. So the electronegativity difference is somewhere between 0.4 and 1.7. So there's still a, quite a big difference between the electronegativities, so one of the atoms in the chemical bond actually hogs the electron. The electrons hang out more around the atom that has the higher electronegativity. So you can see in this picture of hydrogen chloride that the blue electron cloud is kind of lopsided with more of the density of the electrons hanging out around the chlorine and less density of electrons hanging around the hydrogen. That unequal sharing of electrons is called a polar covalent bond. Whereas a nonpolar covalent bond has an electronegativity difference of less than 0.4. In these compounds, the electrons are shared equally. So notice the electron clouds of the hydrogen molecule and the chlorine molecule. The electron cloud is evenly distributed between both hydrogen atoms or evenly distributed between both chlorine atoms. Also notice that the triangle in these pictures represents the center of the negative charge. And in both of the hydrogen and the chlorine molecules, that triangle is in the center of both atoms. 
showing that those negative electrons are equally being shared between the atoms. Whereas in the hydrogen chloride at the top of the page, that triangle representing the negative charge is off-center. Most of the electrons are hanging out more towards the chlorine than they are the hydrogen, and that's what makes them polar. It's very easy to predict what type of chemical bond will form between atoms. All you need to do is be able to subtract the electronegativities of each atom. For example, what type of bonding would be expected between the following atoms? Between fluorine and lithium, I would need to look up the electronegativities of fluorine and lithium. So on an electronegativity table, fluorine has an electronegativity of 4. That's the highest one on the periodic table. Lithium has an electronegativity of 1. So if I find the difference between 4 and 1, I get 3. And a difference of 3 is higher than 1.7, and that falls into the range of being an ionic bond. Now let's take a look at sulfur and copper. Sulfur has an electronegativity of 2.5. Copper has an electronegativity of 1.9. If I find the difference between these two numbers, I get 0.6, and that falls within the range of a polar covalent bond between 0.4 and 1.7, which means the electrons are not going to be equally shared between sulfur and copper. The electrons are going to hang out a little bit more around the sulfur because it has a higher electronegativity. Finally, when we analyze the electronegativities of bromine and iodine, their electronegativities are almost the same. Bromine is 2.8 and iodine is 2.5, so if a bond were to form between an iodine atom and a bromine atom, its bond would be a nonpolar covalent bond, because the difference between the two electronegativities is 0.3, and that falls within that range of a nonpolar covalent bond. So the electrons are roughly going to be equally shared between those two atoms.